My name's Nathan. I'm going to talk today about how Bazel handles globs. We're going to peer under the hood into Bazel and see how it works. Um, so about me, I'm a senior staff software engineer at Google. I mostly work on the internal build stack, including some of the stuff discussed in the previous presentation. And I've been in the build domain since 2013. OK, so in this talk, we're going to go over the glob feature in Bazel. We're going to motivate why it makes Bazel tricky to implement. And we're going to talk about how it implements glob and some different ways we've approached this problem over the years. And then finally, some future improvements. So at the core, uh, the glob feature in Bazel uh, makes the existence of files observable to the execution of build and BZL code. And it's part of the build language. And so here are the docs. Very complicated, nuanced, doesn't matter. We're going to ignore this completely and just consider a very simplified form of the glob feature. And this is more than sufficient to motivate all the technical difficulty. OK, so, so consider a glob feature. Uh, given a, a pattern, return a list of all the path names that match the pattern. So up here, we have a glob with a pattern that's looking for an ex explicit file path, 1.txt. The file exists, so it matches. Here, same thing, but we're looking for a path that does not exist, so there's, there's, there's no matches. And then here, we're doing what's called a recursive glob. That's the star star. And so this is looking for all files that end in .txt in all subdirectories. And so there's two of them. There's one in our current directory, and then there's one in the subdirectory B, and we match both of them. And then down here, uh, same idea, but non-recursive. So just all files that end in .txt in the current directory. So it's just the one .txt. So it sounds pretty simple. What's the big deal, right? OK. One problem is that glob can be used arbitrarily. It's it, just a function. It takes in a string list and turns a string list. So here in this example, I'm just printing out the result, string list. So here's an example of arbitrary usage. Um, we have a build file, loads a, a, a function, and we call it passing in the result of doing a glob on all files ending in .txt. This function takes in a list of, of strings, interpreting them as path strings, and then for each such path string, it instantiates a target whose name is derived from the path string. So um, initially, there are two files in the directory, and there's two targets, and if we add a third file, it's a third target. So the existence of targets is now a function of the contents of the file system. Why is that a problem? OK, well, build files are executed line by line. Uh, so in this example, build file, we're loading an arbitrary function f. Maybe it's the function of the previous slide, doesn't matter. First, we do a recursive glob on, on one subdirectory. Then we call f the result. And then do the same thing with another subdirectory. Problem is, if the first subdirectory is massive, uh, that traversal might, might take a long time. Additionally, maybe the function f takes a long time. We can't even start the second uh, traversal until the first one's done. This is especially bad if uh, Bazel is being used on a network file system. So there's two partial solutions to this. Neither of these is perfectly launched. Um, there's this, this flag, experimental masks directory, so eagerly visit and globbing. And depending on the value of this flag, there's kind of two partial mitigations. Uh, one is to prefetch the globs. We can do a static analysis pass. And um, where we look for, for calls to glob with a statically declared string argument. And then we can just evaluate all those. And then we can execute the build file for real. But we've already pre-computed all the glob results. The next, the other uh, mitigation is um, we can pre-warm the file system by just prospectively traversing subdirectories, just in case there might be a big recursive glob. And so this, this second mitigation helps for the situation where there's a network file system and the network's slow. OK, so does that help? Not completely. So consider this example. This is really two examples in one. So we have two arbitrary functions, f and g. We're going to use g to produce the pattern that we then glob over. So in this case, th this defeats the, the prefetching uh, approach, because we don't actually know the pattern we're going to be globbing. And the, the example at the bottom, there is a statically declared called a glob, the glob.star.txt. Uh, but then we use the results of that through the, through the function g to do another glob. So that, that, that defeats the prefetching as well. OK, so let's do a, a dynamic analysis pass. Now we're going to execute the, the build file as much as possible in order to, to more thoroughly learn the full set of glob patterns we need. So we did this, but then we had to revert it in 2017 <laughs> because uh, the situation where a build file whose cost is dominated not by uh, the glob work, but by the actual Starlark work. In that situation, we're essentially doubling that cost. 
Another difficulty is that of incremental correctness. So this is the same example as before. And in this example, we did um, like a Bazel query, then we added a file and then another Bazel query. H how is Bazel managing the, the sensitivity to arbitrary feature file system uh, mutations? So the solution is SkyFrame. And by coincidence, the previous talk before me covered SkyFrame. So this is Bazel's uh, memorizing parallel incremental computational framework. Um, and ba Bazel, uh, inside Bazel, SkyFrame is implemented using a graph. This is graph of computations as discussed in the previous talk. And there's this natural implementation of this glob stuff using a uh, recursive algorithm where we split the pattern and we process each part of the pattern during file system operations. In, uh, oops, let's see. in uh, BaselCon last year, Benjamin had a great talk on SkyFrame. So let's just check that out if you're interested. Um, a benefit to using SkyFrame is that if we use the SkyFrame functions that already exist in Bazel for doing file system operations, then we automatically get incremental correctness for free with respect to symlinks. If you're curious, see my talk from 2019. And so here's a, a rough sketch of the straightforward recursive algorithm for doing a glob. So in this example, we're doing a double recursive glob expression, the star star slash b slash star star. And the details here don't matter. I'm just trying to show you how the, the recursive algorithm is modeled as a graph of computations. And each node in this graph of computations is a physical node in Bazel's in-memory graph, as discussed in the previous talk. And, and so the, the shape of Bazel's in-memory graph of computations is, is informed by the shape of the recursive glob and the contents of the file system. So if there's a build file, there's a, there's a bunch of big recursive globs that call us out of memory, bad. Another difficulty uh, that globs pose to Bazel is the fact that uh, they can be called arbitrarily in the middle of a build file. Uh, and just the general question is how we make this work given the way that Bazel and SkyFrame works. It does not fit naturally. So we have this kind of uh, we have this hybrid solution where we, we use a, a different approach entirely for evaluating globs outside of SkyFrame. Uh, then, when we're, then after we're done evaluating the build file, we do the SkyFrame stuff from my previous slide. Uh, but the problem is now we're doing the work twice, and so that feels bad. So how does Bazel implement Glob currently? Um, so there was some major work uh, the last year and a half or so um, to introduce this concept of state machines into SkyFrame. Benjamin mentioned his talk last year. This is work done by my teammate, Shahan. Um, and my teammate, Yue, this year re-implemented the Glob function in Bazel. So it's the same high-level recursive algorithm but we've implemented the recursive algorithm using a state machine. And so we've, we've collapsed all the logical nodes starting in green for the recursive steps into one physical node in Bazel, and that solves the memory problem. So summary of the current strategy, uh, before executing a build file, we can optionally prefetch the globs or warm the file system. While executing it, we uh, dispatch to a different mechanism for evaluating globs so that way we can do them in line. And then after executing it, we, we do all the globs for, for real using the SkyFrame stuff and a state machine to save memory. OK, so what are some future improvements? So the, the major remaining high-level problem is that we still have to evaluate all the globs twice in order to be correct. That feels bad. So one, one solution is to use uh, Java virtual threads to be able to pause the line-by-line -line execution of a build file, then do the uh, glob stuff using the SkyFrame thing I mentioned, then resume the line-by-line -line execution of the build file. And prior art for this is what Shudong did for um, external re repo fetching in Bazel last year. Another solution is to just get rid of the line by line paradigm that was discussed two talks ago by, by Susan and Alex. Uh, and they mentioned how the symbolic macros themselves can't call glob. Um, one problem, though, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, is that you can still, in your build file, pass the result of a glob expression to a symbolic macro. And that leads to the next solution. And that is to encourage uses of globs to be simple and optimize Bazel for, for the simple situation. So in this example, um, we're doing two big recursive globs, potentially. But we don't actually need the results until the very end. So we can have Bazel instantiate targets, then evaluate the globs, and then fill in those holes. And that's all I have. Thank you for your time.